guys, what's up? It's Ben and we're back with another video. It's been about a week and a bit since I made the last one. So I had my wisdom teeth out about a week ago now. Hey buddy. Oh. <laughs> I'm not even high though, like, I all good. You're just painful. Wait, what is that thing on your face? It's an ice pack. An ice pack? Why did you get in a fight? Yeah, but I knocked those off the right? Okay. They gave me like a powerful nang beforehand, bro. Right? Like, I remember laughing so hard. It was just, <laughs> <laughs> oh. Bro, like. Is, is it sore, like? Ah, bro. I can really thank you for some shit, bro. So, I haven't really been able to, like, talk super well. But in this video, we're going to be talking about gear. And I get at least a few messages a day. Hey bro, what camera do you use? What lens do you use? How did you do this? How did you do that? So just to start off with gear, not that important. Like overall, I know people that have, well, less expensive gear than me and they take better photos or better video. In terms of like the final product, you need good lighting, good composition. If it's a video, you need like storyline and direction and then good editing skills, you know, post-processing, all that. You need obviously the basic fundamentals, you know, you don't want to be shooting at night at like f16 with like, you know, 10,000 ISO. You need to they know, know how to use the camera and whatnot, but gear, it's not the end of the world if you don't have the best gear and the more expensive stuff comes with features like 4K, longer um, battery life, you know, you can take like more photos per second, higher bit rate, stuff like that. It usually just makes it easier to shoot or easier to shoot a lot of content so you know i'm a full-time photographer i take loads of photos and videos every day you know most of last year i was you know taking like 50 gigs of video and photos every single day so you need you know big memory cards expensive cameras you know we're filming like 4k 100 megabytes a second you know you're gonna need a lot of memory and a good camera to keep up with that and especially a tough camera that's not gonna break you know i've taken probably hundreds of thousands of photos at this point i've uh, never really broken a camera and i use them you know they are, they are tools they're not a little, you know, precious thing. They get dropped, they get hit against the side of cars. They get pretty bad enough. Anyway, today, because I've had so many messages on Instagram and whatnot, I thought that I would just run through my whole gear setup with you guys, say why I use each different thing. Each thing has a very specific purpose. I only buy something if I really need it, if I know I'm gonna use it again and again. So for example, Sometimes I rent the big Profoto B1 strobe light. That's like a $5,000 strobe. I could buy that if I wanted to, but I'm not gonna use it that often. I probably use, uh, probably need to use one once every few months or so. So I rent that out for $100 every few months. Um, but my daily setup, which is why I pretty much take everything with me, a Sony body, three lenses, drone, a gimbal, a tripod, a bunch of stuff. So I'm gonna go grab that now and we can go through it. I'll put some photos up and videos on the screen show you guys what I use each one for. And yeah, if you have any questions about any of the gear or any questions in general, leave a comment down below. Don't forget to subscribe and yeah, let's get into it. So starting out, we've got my Sony a7 III. I've used this camera for about two years now. I got it when it very first came out. I switched to this from my Canon 5D Mark IV and I've been super stoked ever since. The colors aren't quite as good as Canon and they can be a little finicky to use, but once you get used to the Sonys, they are amazing. Super good for low light. And the reason I got the a7 III is because at the time I couldn't really afford a full-time video camera and a big photo camera, which I might be switching to that kind of setup soon because I'm doing a lot more video now. But yeah, I was just starting to get into video and the a7 III is a perfect photo video hybrid. So something like the a7S, mostly video, something like a a7R, which has like, you know, 50 megapixels, a lot better for photo, not so good for video. I haven't actually tried it out, but usually like if it's really high megapixel, there's gonna be more noise and low light and things like that. So the a7 III is an incredible photo video hybrid. You can do 4K, you can shoot super flat logs. Most of the time when I'm doing uh, videos for my clients, so if you guys don't know, I'm a full-time photographer, I'm filming a documentary for another company, and then I also have a digital marketing agency. So if I'm shooting videos, construction or commercial stuff a lot of the time I'll use this Sony Zeiss 16 to 35 f4 lens and this is a this is an incredible lens I've never ever felt the need for the way more expensive 2.8 version f4 is usually plenty and you know on these Sony's you can just bump that ISO up a bit so this is a great lens you know it goes really wide out to 35 
And with these Sonys, they have the crop mode as well. So you can crop it in 1.5 times if you need a little bit more crop. The main thing that I love about this camera is how small it is. It is tiny, you know. If we take this lens off, the camera itself, not much bigger than an iPhone. It's probably like three iPhones set together. It's really, really nice. It's super fast. You need quite a fast SD card to go along with them. Because I can shoot this, I think it's 24 megapixels. I can shoot this at like seven or eight frames per second. So you need like a 150, 200, 300 megabyte per second card to keep up with that. Love the Sony's, just the lightweight portability. And you know, if I really wanted to, I could put it in my hoodie pocket. And yeah, it just goes along great. Flat logs are really good. The noise in low light shooting, amazing. You know, I've taken photos, I don't recommend doing this. I think you should compose the best you can for your environment. But I've shot pretty much pitch black photos, brightened them up and you know, for social media, they look sweet. So yeah, that's my main run and gun camera. Pretty much every video, every photo you've seen on my Instagram or YouTube the last two years, two, three, three years pretty much ever since I started Instagram, been using this. So I don't see any reason to upgrade. I don't feel like I'm being held back um, by my gear at all of the photos on this thing yet. The next upgrade I'll probably do is to probably buy a full-time video camera like a Blackmagic or a RED or something like that. So here we got the Sigma 24mm 1.4 lens. This lens is absolutely beautiful. So it's a prime lens. It's super, super sharp. Even at 1.4, it's really good. Now, I actually don't use this lens very much at all. I pretty much only use this lens if I'm going for a very kind of artsy look, but we've used it for some nighttime car shooting. Usually nighttime photos, it's quite hard to get down to 1.4 in the daytime using this lens, and it's also quite wide. So it's not perfect for cars. I am gonna be getting a 35 mil or a 50 mil 1.4 soon, but I've actually shot um, some rollers at sunset with this lens as well, because it's just so crisp. Like if you bump this lens up to like f5.6, it is just way sharper than any zoom lens. Uh, prime lenses are just usually a lot sharper. So yeah, really happy with this lens and I need to actually use it more. I'm gonna use it tonight for our photo shoot, which will be the next vlog. Now I'd say this is probably my second most used lens. I usually shoot wider than I need to. I really, really like the 16 to 35. Most of my client work is construction and commercial stuff like events, that sort of thing. So you usually want pretty wide. Um, and then if I need to, obviously you can zoom in to 35 or uh, you know, use that crop mode. But yeah, this is the Tamron 28 to 75 lens, 2.8. Uh, this has the IS built into it. Also, another great thing about the Sony is it has that built-in image stabilization. So when you combine that with a lens that has image stabilization, it is so, so good. Like, if you, especially if you're shooting rollers, you're hanging out of a car, um, you know, I shoot my rollers at 1 25th of a second. Yeah, having that image stabilization is really, really helpful is you get a way higher amount of clean shots um, but yeah this lens super good goes from 28 whoop, up to 70 and this is just a really good versatile lens i kind of wish that it was a little bit wider like 24 you know you got this and the 1635 you can't really go wrong so those are the two lenses i use the most and then if i need some artsy stuff i'll grab 24 and four and of course with any camera setup you need some spare batteries stuff like that so for my Sony, I think I have these three and then one on the camera, so we got four batteries total and that's good for easily a full day. The reason that I switched to Sony when I did is because when the a7 III came out, it was by far the best Sony that had ever come out in terms of battery life and things like that. So I was trying to switch from Canon for a while, but the battery life and the autofocus system just weren't up to par. But this Sony, I've run one battery and gotten like well over a thousand photos out of one battery of that and hours and hours of video like these things are beasts whereas i've used like a panasonic gh5 and those batteries are fucking awful like a7 III and any cameras produced after that really really good battery life i wouldn't really suggest if you're doing a ton of video and you don't want to be swapping in batteries all the time getting anything lower than that we also have a portable power bank i have a few of these i keep them on my rack over there which i'll show you later just always charged up and i can rotate them we've got some cleaning equipment you got a little just a little air blower if there's any dust on your lens or anything when you're switching lenses always make sure to uh, clean out the inside of the camera we've got some microfiber cloths and shit always good to keep your camera equipment clean. So we got a few more little accessories for the Sony as well. We've got this battery grip. So basically you take this out and that fits two batteries inside it. This part replaces the initial battery. So basically it can just hold 
two batteries instead of one. This is actually the knockoff version. I think the real Sony one was like $600 for a little piece of plastic. So it's like, fuck that. I got a um, hundred dollar one off Amazon and yeah, basically just fits two batteries. You can flip it, it's got a nice vertical grip on it. So if you're doing photos where you're not really using a tripod, it's a bit more awkward if you have a tripod because it makes the camera a lot bigger. And if you're just running around taking handheld shots, even handheld video, having two batteries is really good. Um, especially for video, you know, if one battery dies, it doesn't even turn off the video while it switches to the second one. We've got a little camera strap. Um, I don't even use this much anymore. But yeah, if I'm ever like, if I'm at an event, that I'm just taking photos at, I need to you know, be running around, I don't want to be carrying it the entire time, so I can put this around my shoulder. That's camera strap. We've got a bunch of filters for the lenses as well. So every lens that I buy, I instantly buy a CPL filter. So that stays on the lens 100% of the time. Sometimes I take them off for nighttime shots because the polarization looks strange at nighttime, but they're on there 99% of the time. And that's to protect the lens as well. I don't buy those UV filters um, that just go on top. I just keep the polarizing filter on and that is like a, a need for car photography especially. We've got one of those on every lens and then I also buy an ND filter for every lens. So we've got some ND 64s and a few 32s here. Got those for all of my lenses. So if it's really, really bright, I can bring down that exposure by five to 10 stops. And that means that I can shoot at like f 2.8 or sometimes even lower at 24 FPS, 1 50th shutter speed in the middle of the day as it's super bright. And that's gonna look, make your footage look way better. And for all my filters, I use a company from Australia called Gobi. They make incredible and affordable filters for pretty much every size lens. They got CPLs, NDs, and then I think every lens filter that you buy, they plant a tree or, or a few. But yeah, that's always, that's always nice. In terms of audio, we've got a few microphones. We have this Zoom H1N recorder, this little fluffy boy here. We've got a little dead cat on the top for some wind reduction. Uh, basically what this is, it's just a super condensed microphone. So if I talk into it like that right here, it's gonna be, so, you won't hear anything in the background at all. It only records like, you know, things like th within this little area here. Really, really nice. I picked this up for only like a few hundred dollars. And if you're just starting to get into car video or anything like that, this is a super nice addition to your kit. I often put this in the boot of the car and then run a little lav microphone, duct tape that right next to the car exhaust and that's how you get the best audio. For an upcoming film that we're doing, I'm actually gonna get two of these, put one in the engine bay so I can get some blower valve noises and then one in the exhaust. We also have a shotgun microphone. So I'm actually gonna be upgrading this soon, but it's done me really well for the last few years. And that is the Rode video mic. So this is quite a cheap one. I think it's a, I think it's like $300-ish. I usually use this in most of my car videos. I just put it on top of the camera, it fits just on top of my camera while my camera is in the gimbal, which is quite hard to do, quite a thin profile, which is really good. And if I'm ever filming any events or any client work where you just need more environmental sounds and you don't need like super crisp audio from a very particular place, this is just a really good all around mic. So in terms of video, um, the most helpful thing that I've ever bought is one of these monitors. This monitor goes on top of the gimbal. This is a little uh, small HD monitor. It's actually not the best. Uh, I got it second hand from one of my mates. Um, probably gonna be upgrading this to one of those aperture ones soon. But this has been really, really good and you know, especially when your camera is in the gimbal, you can't really see, you know, down through the gimbal into the little LCD screen if you know if it does flip up a bit. So this is really nice and you can't change the settings of the camera with this one, but you know, it has a big display and you can see it really crisp. I think this one is 4K and you can change, like you can show zebra effects. It can warn you if it's overexposed. This is a really, really good addition and I don't film any videos without it now. I recently got this GoPro Max. I only really used it when I went to Canada and did that little snowboarding video. I didn't really give it a proper test, but the look that you get out of this camera is mad but you can do that little planet effect. You can get super wide shots and transition them with the GoPro software. So I need to do some more testing of this. I haven't really used it much since I got back from Canada because we've been in lockdown and everything. But yeah, I'm gonna use this one for some interesting car videos as well soon, so. Next up, we've got my brand new uh, Mavic Air 2. I just picked this one up actually maybe two weeks ago. I was running without a drone for a few months because 
when we went to LA in October, I was flying my drone, um, well actually up in Oregon, I was flying it in one of the forests up there, and typical DJI, the one time that you actually need to use the home button, I clicked the home button and it was like two kilometers away, didn't come back, so that one's somewhere in an Oregon forest, so I picked this new one up, and it's been really, really good. I did one photo, the bird's eye photo, of Grant Becker's La Ferrari, and everyone seemed to really like that. Quite a unique perspective. Some of the car videos that we're filming over the next few weeks are gonna be sick, and I'm definitely gonna use the drone for a different perspective on those. I really haven't been doing as much drone photography as I'd like to lately. I used to do it almost every day, actually. And this one does 4K 60fps, which is sort of the minimum that you need of the drone, I believe. You need to be able to slow-mo and you need it, uh, you need 4K because you need to be able to crop in, you're going to be able to want to do the slow zoom pans, stuff like that. So yeah, really good to have this one picked up and can't wait to use it more. So back to photos, we've got my little lightsaber here. This is the Yongnuo, what is it, YN360. It's just a nice big video LED light. You can change the colors on it. You can go, what's that, red? Green, whatever fucking color you want, it's pretty mean. So I use this when I'm doing some light painting on a car, or I just need a little bit of fill light. If it's quite a dark environment and I just want to light up one side of the car, I'll get usually the owner of the car to just hold it here, shine the light on one side of the car, just for a little bit of fill light. Also, every photographer, videographer needs a good tripod. This one is just a me photo carbon fiber tripod. I like to always have my tripods carbon fiber, so they're really lightweight. If I go traveling, I don't have to lug around some big aluminium or steel tripod. This one's really sturdy. I think it was like three or four hundred bucks. I've had it for years and it works a treat. You don't need to go super fancy on your tripods really. But yeah, everyone needs a good tripod and even at sunset, you should really use a tripod if you're going anything below like one one hundredth of a second. The picture might look really sharp on the back of the camera, but you chuck it in your computer and it's just a little bit off. So if in doubt, use a tripod. Now we start getting into the more sort of complex gear. So this is my Movi M5 gimbal. It's a complete carbon fiber gimbal. Um, I recently upgraded to this from my Ronin M. Now this one is quite hard to use, uh, you have to get it really calibrated and it takes like a good 10-15 seconds to turn on so it's not the most versatile gimbal but I really prefer using this over something like a Ronin M. The Ronin M's are really really easy to use but they're just not great, they're quite hard to calibrate. I've never been able to get my Ronin M perfect but I still have it you know in case I need to use it or in case I need two gimbals. This gimbal I think it usually goes for like well, when it first came out at least five years ago this is quite outdated now but it went for like five grand or something. I managed to get it off my mate quite cheap. I've held this out of a car at over 150 k's an hour and the motors are really strong doesn't blow, super, super stable. And this gimbal, unlike the Ronin, can go facing all the way up to the sky, all the way down to the ground. It never shuts off, it never complains about the motors being overdone. It's just a really, really good gimbal. And how I lug all the stuff around is just in this Low Pro messenger bag. I've actually had this for a few years and I'm gonna upgrade it soon. It's getting a bit annoying, but this is perfect actually for most travel. If you're running around the city, if you're getting in and out of your car a lot, or I took this one to LA as well. It's just a really good all around travel bag. I'll also show you guys really quickly how I keep all this stuff organized. Everything, you know, it needs to be charged. Usually every day when I come home, I need to charge a bunch of batteries. So this is my little cabinet here. So on top, I've got all of my batteries and any little miscellaneous things. I've got a box full of double A's, triple A's here. These are all my batteries. Below this, we have my little charging station. So we have drone charger, batteries, monitor charger, gimbal charger, camera charger, GoPro charger. That's my beard trimmer. We've got all the camera accessories down here, a bunch of other miscellaneous stuff there. And then I got, this is sort of where I put all my stuff when I'm done for it for the day. So I'll put it here, take out the batteries, charge them. They're all ready the next morning when I'm ready to go. And then we just got our gimbal and stuff down there. So organization is really important, especially when you're using your stuff every day. You know, everything is always charged up. If I need to grab something out of the house and run, I know that everything's gonna be charged, so I just keep it all there. So that's really important when it comes to, you know, sort of more full-time work or it's just, it's just good to be organized. 
And then this is my little computer setup right now. Um, I'm actually gonna be upgrading this computer very soon to a new Windows setup. You know, now I do all my films in 4K, so I need a better computer, but this 2013 4K iMac has been really, really good for the last few years. I never really edit anything except vlogs and the occasional photos when I'm on the road on my laptop. But yeah, we just got a little setup here. Uh, this, a really important upgrade that I got for this iMac is a big one terabyte SSD. Got my card reader, uh, backup hard drive back there. Just quite a simple setup. And really, really happy with how these new prints are coming along as well. If you guys want one of these, leave a comment down below or message me on Instagram. You can get any photos from my Instagram. We use really high quality photo paper from a, um, a really top notch print shop here in Auckland. I've uh, got these nice little frames for them as well. So really stoked with how this little setup is coming along. Also, I've just started pimping out my room a bit with some art. I'm gonna get a nice big one here. And then I got some of my favorite wrappers up there on the wall above my bed. So I hope you guys enjoyed that video. You know, I didn't go into super detail. Just wanted to kind of show you guys what I use. Um, you don't need anything close to this to get started at all. I got started on an old Nikon D3100, I believe, uh, then upgraded to a Canon 6D, then a Canon 5D Mark IV, and now I'm in the Sony's. That new Canon EOS R mirrorless looks quite enticing, but I just cannot be bothered buying a whole new set of lenses and relearning all that right now. So Sony gang right now, if you have any questions or anything, comment down below, I'll answer them. Um, and thank you for all the recent support on the YouTube channel. It's going really well. We're about to hit a thousand subscribers, which is sick. I'm really enjoying making this content for you guys. So yeah, I uh, really appreciate it. If you could leave a like and subscribe down below if you haven't already. Have a good weekend and I will see you in the next one.